Hello, my name is Justin Patterson. I'm with QTE Manufacturing Solutions, and I'm here to show you the advancements to the Equal Scallop Toolpath in MasterCam 2020. Uh, they've really updated this toolpath to make it a very versatile toolpath. You can do quite a bit with it. Um, here's to show you some of the features. The one we're going to start with right now is this turquoise color. Uh, we're going to say that this part's made out of a steel or so, a harder material to where your your cutting strategies with this versus an aluminum is a little different. We can't uh, get it as aggressive. So let's go ahead and cut this the way we normally think equal scallop works. So if we go grab equal scallop, we're going to go pick all those turquoise surfaces just like this. And one thing that I don't know if a lot of people realize is this include silhouette boundary. What that means is whatever geometry or surfaces we pick or faces, in this case, this turquoise color, it'll draw an imaginary containment boundary around that. So it's nice. We no longer always have to have a boundary chain. We can just say include the silhouette boundaries. Uh, we'll use this 3 16th inch ball nose, and I'm going to do a 25 thousandths step over. So this is what we'd, we'd be used to with a, a scallop toolpath, equal scallop toolpath. So... Everything looks good except, so all these cuts, that climbing up, all that's good. But this cut right here is not really ideal, one for a 3 16 ball nose, in a harder metal, in that steep of a decline. Um, that's not really what that tool's meant to do. You're going you're gonna to run into a little bit of issues. Uh, the way this, school, this tool path works straight out of the box, without making any changes, is it takes the containment boundary, or in this case, the silhouette boundary, and radiates the toolpath in until it meets at a defined starting point. The whole goal of this is for the tool to end on the outer containment boundary all at the same time. So as you just can just imagine, it just takes that chain and shrinks it into a start point. Uh, it works it. That's how it actually defines the cut. So all these cuts will end at the same time, as you can tell. It's, it's a very good just the way it is, but for this case, this is not really the best scenario. So a lot of people would probably want to go in here and use a flow line to zigzag your way up, which is perfectly acceptable, but that can all be done in equal scallop now. By going into equal scallop, we don't change anything here. Where we start looking at things a little different is we go in and we tell it we're going to change the strategy. We're going to go in here and say, I want to do a trimmed offset. And I'll explain this here in a second. So by changing a trimmed offset, we can now define... The, the drive chain or the drive curve in this instance, which is what we're going to define right here, what defines this toolpath cut? So if I go in here to my curve, I'm going to go pick this chain right here. This is what's going to define our cut. So the only thing we have to do before we're done is go into our cut parameters, and we have two different cut styles now, or two different sections. We have a closed contour direction and an open contour direction. And I'll show you the differences between this now, but since we are driving an open chain, it's only going to look at the open chain direction. So right now it's set to one way. Well, let's just green check it and let's just see what it looks like. You'll see how a one way would work. So this would work really good in a hard metal, you know, because we're, we're consistently climb cutting. We're starting at the bottom, working our way up. It's going to retract each time to go to the, the next, okay? Just like that. There's our retracts. Uh, doesn't need to be that high. But we can also, with that, if we went into our open contour, we have the option of zigzagging. So now this is how we can turn this into a uh, flow line style toolpath, where we come in and we just zigzag the whole way up with a small enough step over. This is a great way to do this. A great way to do this surface right here. Okay. So it'll actually zigzag the whole way up. So to explain the difference between this closed contour and open contour in to, to where they work together is let's go change our defining curve. So instead of that curve down here, why don't we go define this one little section right here? Just that one little section. Okay, that's all I've changed. I'm going to go ahead and regen this toolpath. And you'll see that has become the defining section there. That's been the defining section. So if you watch my toolpath, it spirals out one ways out until it reaches a point to where it's now considered a open contour right there. 
Now we start zigzagging. We can change right in the middle of it uh, to start zigzagging from an open contour. So that you can kind of see the versatility of this toolpath. This is not going to be ideal for this situation. Um, but you can kind of see where just by defining this chain down here, it really makes this toolpath work really nice, okay? So that's a good start for there. Now we can go into this a little farther. Let's say we want to go cut these two surfaces here at this angle. Well, I don't, I, I, I'm not real big on zigzagging. Let's say I just wanted to cut up this whole thing, just keep cutting up. Well, I can use equal scallop again. So let's go pick these two surfaces right here. Everything stays the same, except my drive curve now is going to be this chain here. I want everything to come off of that. So the difference is if I, let's go ahead and just leave it like it is. I always like you to try to see, uh, try to see what it's going to do. So this is our zigzag. Well, we're, we're going down the same problem we were before, the, the down cuts there. So what we can do is if we go in here and change the, cl the closed contour direction, this is the only thing confusing because this is considered an open contour, but yet I'm going to go tell you to go change the closed contour. But to, it'll make sense because we're going to tell it to only worry about up mill. Don't worry. I don't care if it's closed, open, anything. The only way you're allowed to cut is straight up. So that's why it grays out the other one, the open contour. So now if you look, when I regen this tool path, this is getting a lot more like what we want it to do. So it's just going to start and it's just going to cut up. So see, there it goes, goes down, cuts up. So you can see how you're really starting to fine tune this tool path. You'll see when it gets to this little closed area, you'll see how it trims. This is the trim strategy. It's trimming the strategy based on the information I give it via the drive curve in the drive geometry, the drive surfaces. So that's a good way we could really cut that surface there. So you can kind of really see you can do just about anything to make these cuts. Um, I'm going to show you another way. The nice thing about it, you don't even have to use chains that are on the part. We can go create these custom chains pretty much anywhere. So what we can do with that is come in here and grab a standard line. Let's go here to top view. I'm just going to show you how this will work. I could come in and draw this line that goes from here to here. It's going to kind of do the same thing we did here, but on this, this surface here. And you notice how that, that, that line is not even on the surface but I can still use it. So let's go back into this. Let's say you want to change that up. Let's go grab you, pick that chain. And again, I want to do the up mill, up mill, green check. And you'll see how we're doing the same thing here. We can create our own geometry. There you go. It's just going to up mill the whole way up. And since it's set to inside to outside, that is the one thing with equal scallop is it, it divides the surface. You rather go from the outside in or the inside out. This is set to inside out. So it'll do this whole surface and then this whole surface. So that's kind of a good, good way you can really think about how equal scallop can be used. This is kind of not applicable right here, but I, I want to show you that you can create any kind of geometry you want to drive anything. So let's create a circle here. Uh, let's just create this line that goes like this, you know, so on and so forth. I'm just, just random lines. That's all I'm doing. And I can define those as drive surfaces too. I mean, this is nothing you're really going to do, but you can do multiples. Uh, the only thing I do want to do is let's go change this back to one way and zigzag. Okay, and let's regen it. So if you wanted to do anything decorative, you could. What's cool about this? You could, you could stencil your name and have the toolpath radiate off of that. So that's. Let, let's just look at it like that. Let's go and do uh, a wireframe, a wireframe, and go here. And let's just type. Uh, let's just do MCAM. How about that? Okay, way too big, of course. What if we did something like that? Okay. Reselect the base point. Actually, let's do it right here. How about we do it right here? Okay. So now if I go in here and I create me an equal scallop, pick you, trimmed offset, well, my chains are going to be you. 
Everything radiates off of that. One way in a zigzag. So you can kind of see how you can be very almost decorative with this. There's a lot, see? Everything will radiate off of those drive chains. So I hope this kind of helps to, to shine some light on, you know, how Equal Scallop can really be utilized um, very well uh, to do quite a bit of things. So uh, if there's any additional questions you might have on this, go ahead and reach out to us and the support team, and we'd be glad to give you a hand.